Hello and welcome to uh, this next exciting episode of uh, <clears throat> Beowulf. Uh, we uh, we actually finished in uh, almost in mid sentence uh, last time, and that's the way that uh, some editors uh, uh, assume that the 29th um, fit comes in. Although um, it uh, it's not broken up that way in in your text. So uh, we'll, we're starting on line twenty thirty nine. So um, if that's the middle of a fit from uh, your text, then uh, uh, then so be it. But we're also in the middle of a story. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, Beowulf's uh, kind of projection into the future of a story that's all too typical in uh, uh, Germanic heroic literature, the story of feuds and solving a through, feud through Freyowib, uh, the, the peace weaving, which is uh, the word for uh, a bride, but the bride is, uh, is a kind of a peace offering. And so sometimes feuds are solved by marrying um, a woman of the one family to another. And Beowulf is, is uh, anticipating this kind of marriage um, uh, between the daughter of uh, Hrothgar Freyawarl uh, and Ingeld, and he says it's going to end in blood. And of course, the audience listening to this story knows that it's true, so we uh, see Beowulf as a man not only of, uh, of great skill and strength, but also of uh, prophetic insight. Okay, so, um, so this is Beowulf um, imagining that situation in line 2041. Then over the ale, on this heirloom gazing, some ash wielder old who has all in mind that spear death of men. Okay. What that means is this: the heirloom is um, a sword or a bit of armor that belongs to one of my kinsmen. I see now uh, on the body of uh, another warrior, an enemy who has killed him to get that, uh, that armor. So uh, what Beowulf is saying is that that's not a stable situation. Okay. Um, so Ingeld is mentioned on page 264. He's the Hethobard, uh son of Froda. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, who married uh, Freya Warl. I don't think... Uh, uh, really, the rest of uh, 29 and 30 um, uh, tells that story. Although, again, so far the stories have been um, reflecting back on the ancient past. Now, this is Beowulf reflecting forward to something that has not happened yet. That is typical of the, uh, uh, the temporal point of view of uh, the Beowulf poem and Old English poetry in general. Uh, there is that polychronic uh, sort of view where, uh, for example, in the uh, the opening uh, description of Harold, when Harold is first um, mentioned, uh, the poet says that the flames are waiting this uh, this hall. So, in describing the gorgeous uh, mead hall. The poet is already aware that it doesn't exist anymore, that it burned down. And so he expresses that by uh, placing in the present uh, the, uh, the flames as if the flames are, are inside the wood of the hall waiting to, be, uh, to consume the hall. Um, so uh, Beowulf is in the presence of Helak. He's been telling him all of this. And so he concludes his uh, speech of giving. He's, he's returning all of the booty that he got from, uh, uh, I guess it's not really booty, it's, uh, uh, it is uh, the just recompense for the, uh, a Thane's gift for the slaying of, uh, of Grendel and Grendel's mom. Uh, and he renders it back to, to his king, Helak, and uh, he does that in line 20, 148. Now to thee, my prince, I proffer them. All gladly give them. Few indeed have I kinsmen, save Helak thee. Okay, so that reflection that Helak is the only kinsman that Beowulf has left um, is a part of the poignancy of this poem, uh, what we call the elegiac theme, the, the lament for things that have passed. The necklace that was given to him by um, Wailfell, the queen of the Danes, he gives to his queen, to uh, Helok's queen, uh, the necklace to Hidge he presented, wonder wrought treasure, which, which Wailfell gave him. Then, um, this is not very important, but uh, uh, it's part of the characterization that is often 
uh, uh, skipped over that, in fact, Beowulf seems to be part of an older tale type, um, and that may be embedded in his name, the the, the story of the uh, the bear, um, the bear, the were bear, uh, and uh, the idea is that he is uh, what the old Norse called a kolbitar. Uh, uh, a weakling and uh, uh, the the least likely uh, candidate for uh, heroism. Uh, there's no indication of that other than these lines here, uh, line 2185. Long was he spurned and worth as and worthless uh, by the Yetish warriors held him uh, him at Mead the master of clans failed full oft to favor at all. Okay, so he wasn't even invited to play their reindeer games. Okay, but then he turns out to um, do great things. Um, and this is what Hrothgar does. He lays a sword. That's what the brand uh, means in line 2194. The brand he laid in Beowulf's lap, lap and of hides assigned him 7,000. Hide was a measure of land uh, and house and high seat. So, um, giving the physical gifts, uh, Beowulf gives the physical gifts to Helok. Helok in return gives him uh, land and uh, power in his kingdom. Now further it fell with the flight of years, with Herring's horde, that Helok perished, and Herdred too. Okay. <clears throat> now the whole story is told briefly, and then uh, expanded in um, more detail in the next fit. Uh, but here, line 2200, um, uh, Helok dies, and then his son Herimo, Herdred um, uh, takes over, and Herdred dies too, and only then does Beowulf become king. So a lot of years passed. We don't know how many. They're, they're unclear about that. Uh, but, uh, but when Beowulf does become king, he rules 50 winters. So when we get to the dragon episode, this guy, he could be 90. He could be, uh, you know, if you say he's 20 years old, and then who knows how, during the Grendel episode, who knows how many years uh, uh, between, there's two kings between him and uh, uh, Helok. Uh, and uh, so who knows how many years. Uh, it, it could be uh, quick. I mean, it could be uh, Helok could die a month after, and then uh, uh, Herdred only uh, rules a month. We don't know. But um, let's say it's the normal uh, span, and uh, he, he could be a real geezer. Uh, so stanza 30, or fit, fit number 30, um, the tale shifts to the story of this dragon sitting on a treasure hoard, uh, and a fugitive, an exile, who sneaks into the dragon hoard and steals something. Line 22:32. Of such besides there was store enough, heirlooms old, the earth below, which some earl forgotten in ancient years, left the last of his lofty race. Okay, so the reflection that Beowulf and Helok were the last of his clan uh, is, is seen to be a part of the normal tale-telling of, uh, uh, of the ancient uh, English, uh, that, in fact, the people who left this uh, treasure, that was their fate too. Eventually, uh, the last one dies out. And so then the dragon uh, seizes it. Powerful this plague of the people thus held the house of the horde in earth. Three hundred winters. That's line 2280. So the dragon sits on this treasure for three hundred years, and then uh, somebody steals the cup. Uh, soon the bear was plundered, borne off was his booty. When the dragon awoke, new woe was kindled, line 2287. Uh, and uh, that's the end of uh, Fit 30, so uh, uh, let's pick it up there in our next exciting episode, uh, and we'll see you then. God bless you.